I'm Professor Cos Martin. Welcome to my class on how to sell drugs 101. So I want everybody to take out your notebooks, pens, papers, whatever you have to take notes with right now. Pull it out real quick. Come on. You really want to be a drug dealer? Yeah? I guess everybody knows where to buy drugs from. I'm here to tell you about the power of untapped talents. Does anybody know what this is? I know there's some old heads in the, in, the, in the crowd, but I see a lot of young kids over here. This is the beeper. And it was a way we communicated pre-cell phone. It was a device that we used back in the day. And at 13, all I had was a beeper, an ounce of weed, and a dream of becoming rich. I wanted to be rich so badly because I grew up in one of the poorest and over-policed communities in New York City, the Lower East Side. In New York State, we incarcerate more people than any other country in the whole entire world. And back in the 80s and 90s, there were seven neighborhoods that made up 75% of the entire prison population. Seven neighborhoods and I belong to one of them, which were made of black and brown people. So at 13, I got a beep from one of my clients. And so I went to go meet him, and I actually brought my nine-year-old brother with me. And at the time, he asked me, hey, can I get two bags, and do you wanna smoke with me? And I said, hell yeah. So I took a bag of weed, rolled it up, lit it up, and all three of us began walking. And as I had the blunt right by my hand, a grown man grabbed my wrist. And he said, drop the blunt. And it was an undercover detective that cuffed me. And my brother began crying. At the time, my brother was wearing a starter jacket. And under the starter jacket, he had a dare shirt. The dare shirt stood for Drug Abuse Resistance Education. It was a program created in the Reagan era to keep kids off drugs. And so my brother screamed, let my brother go, I'm part of the D.A.R.E. program! And the undercover detectives just laughed at him. But this was the beginning of my arrest record. And after this, jail and prison became a revolving door. See, every time I went in, I started contemplating on how to be a better drug dealer. There was no programs inside. There was nothing else to do but to sit in my thoughts in my prison cell and think about the things that I knew. I started selling drugs in a corner bodega sitting on a milk crate. And I quickly changed my strategy up by dealing to high net worth individuals and increased my profit margins by 300%. And we actually marketed to them by using business cards and dressing just like them with business suits and ties. And it blew up. At 19, I was making over $2 million a year. I had run one of the largest drug delivery services in New York City, and I had over 20 people working for me. Someone was told me, if I would have been born here in Silicon Valley, I could have been the next Steve Jobs. I don't know about that. But what I do know is that systemic racism is real. And if I would have been born here, in a different community, with a different skin color, I would have definitely not ended up in the criminal justice system. Today, black and white people use drugs at the same rate but black people and brown people are six and a half times most likely to be incarcerated for it. Actually, one in three black men will be incarcerated in the system today. One in three, compared to one in 17 white men. Are black and brown people more dangerous than white people? I have met the most brightest, charismatic, most creative people in prison. Who here knows of anybody that could build a tattoo gun out of a CD player? 
I bet Steve Jobs can't do that. Or make a whole chessboard out of toilet paper. Or make the best alcoholic drinks with no access to liquor. So my dream when I went inside and I wanted to come out was to elevate these talents to, to the world. And I started by Combody. Combody is a prison style boot camp where we hire formerly incarcerated individuals to teach fitness classes. And this was derived from my personal experience in prison. See, when I went inside, doctors told me my cholesterol levels were through the roof. And if I didn't eat correctly or work out, I could probably die of a heart attack. And in prison, you don't get the best food. So I started working out obsessively. And I managed to lose over 70 pounds in six months. And then I helped over 20 inmates lose over 1,000 pounds combined. Today, we've trained over 70,000 people virtually and in person. And what I'm proud of is, proudest of is that we've hired over 50 formerly incarcerated individuals and have a zero recidivism rate. That means no one has gone back inside. Please meet Sarita Wright, who at 16 years old, 16 committed a mistake and was involved in a robbery gone wrong. I hired her as quickly as she came out from a 22 year prison sentence. Today, she's one of our top trainers and she's actually going inside the criminal justice space in juvenile facilities, teaching the youth how to live a healthier lifestyle. So Tom Malik, who did 14 years in prison, seven years in solitary confinement. You think quarantine was hard? Try the box. Today, he's rated one of the top five trainers by Reebok across the whole country. And he's coming up with a new fitness business. Think about it as we work meets fitness, where trainers rent out his facilities to train their clients. Today, I want you to imagine how you judge somebody coming out of the prison system. What do we see in the surface? Do we just want to judge them for that? Or how about we judge them for their incredible untapped talents? So today I'm actually expanding my mission in a different form, in a different industry in New York State. Marijuana. Well, my old industry that got uh, acquired by the Drug Enforcement Agency See, since the launch of the cannabis legalization industry across 37 states, 13 states adapted a social equity program. New York State is actually being the boldest now. They stated that the first 100 to 200 licenses are going to formerly incarcerated individuals that have been justice impacted by the war on drugs, specifically cannabis. So today, my mission at ConBud, ConBud, is to hire as many formerly incarcerated in the people coming out of the prison system that have been justice impacted on the war on drugs. ConBud will provide a real second chance because we have seen how rich, white, wealthy individuals make a fortune off of it while black and brown people still sit in prison cells for a couple bags of weed. I wanna to prove to the industry that we could be as smart as them and we could be trusted, reformed citizens that can run a legal, successful business. And I will use the same transferable skills that I use in the streets to the legal world. See, back in the day, I sold a great product consistently I had an incredible team to deliver this product and I believed in my product so much that I knew it was gonna be a success and there was no room for failure. The only difference between an illegal business and a legal business is that I'm actually paying taxes now. So let's take a look at history. 
some of the people that we glorify the most, that we believe in the most, have all been in the, in the criminal justice system. I want you to think about that. How would you perceive someone in prison? And as you go out today and you become our, our leaders and our decision makers, I want you to think about how you view somebody coming out of the prison system. I want you to look at somebody coming out of the prison system as somebody who's a potential leader, entrepreneur, and most importantly, our neighbors. Because today's incarcerated individual will be tomorrow's neighbor. Do you want that person coming out to be the best person they can be? Or do you want that person reverting back to the streets because of the lack of opportunities? Think about it. And oh, by the way, remember that kid in the beginning of my story, my little brother with the dare shirt? The one that grew up in the same situation as I did? Who could have been part of the same statistic? He's actually New York City City Council member of District 1 now. A real true talent of the Lower East Side. And as I end my discussion today, and I teach you my lesson of selling drugs, I'm gonna close out with this. A, B, C. Always be closing. As we grow in this industry, I want you to follow us and I wanna really change perceptions and really be the leaders on how we view formerly incarcerated by changing the system and creating an equitable world. Thank you so much, I appreciate y'all.